Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe to the channel for regular content on ancient architecture, as well as all of the latest news from the world of archaeology. Anybody interested in the very remote sites of Gebekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe will no doubt have heard that they belong to the period of time we call the Pre-Pottery Neolithic, and this roughly began around 12,000 years ago. The terminology was coined by the late, great Kathleen Kenyon when she excavated Jericho in the 1950s and 60s. She classified it as the earliest phase of the Neolithic in the Near East, when agriculture was practiced but pottery was not being made. She then further subdivided it into the pre-pottery Neolithic A and B, and later excavations at Ein Gazelle led to a third subphase being identified the pre-pottery Neolithic C, and these were also then subdivided. So, you hear pre-pottery and you think no pottery, and you hear Neolithic, and of course you think agriculture. But what are these? We're looking at miniature pottery vessels, and these were found in the past few years at Karahan Tepe, and amazingly, they're in a pre-pottery Neolithic context. Dr. Nesmi Carroll, who's head of the Tashtapella project, confirmed with me that they date back to between the 8th and the end of the 9th millenniums BC. Furthermore, if you read Dr. Carroll's 2021 publication, Buried Buildings at Pre-Pottery Neolithic Karahan Tepe, regarding the fill of the pillar enclosure AB, he says, quote, On this first layer, at the very bottom, there is a dark coloured filling of 1.5 metres, containing irregular and different sizes of stones and archaeological material, including a few pottery shards. End quote. So, there is even more evidence of pottery at Karahan Tepe, albeit late in the pre-pottery Neolithic. And so far in the excavations, we don't find any evidence of agriculture at Karahan Tepe, with only wild varieties of cereals and plants discovered, and the bone remains all come from wild species of animals. So, Karahan Tepe is a pre-pottery Neolithic site, but with pottery and no agriculture. So how is it pre-pottery Neolithic? And no, I don't blame you for being confused. So, in the 21st century, what really defines the pre-pottery Neolithic? How do we determine if a site belongs to this era? Well, since the early excavations of Jericho more than 60 years ago, when the phrase was first coined, we have learned so much. It is true that some pre-pottery Neolithic sites do show signs of early agriculture, such as Abu Huraira in Syria, but of course there are also some that don't, such as Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. Most sites show no pottery of any kind, but we have now found pottery at Karahan Tepe and also Bonchuklu Hoyuk. In the modern era, pre-pottery Neolithic may have lost its meaning, but the term is still used to characterise this defining period of history in southwestern Asia. So, in this video, I'll explain to you what we mean by pre-pottery Neolithic today, so when you hear me or an archaeologist mention it, you do have a better idea of what we're talking about. Well, that's the plan anyway. It's really best to break it down into the subcategories. The pre-pottery Neolithic A is the earliest Neolithic after the Epi-Paleolithic and is situated between hunting and gathering and sedentary farming communities. Depending on which part of the Fertile Crescent is being studied and also which paper you read, dating seems to vary. New data is also changing previous estimates, but broadly speaking, the pre-pottery Neolithic A is roughly dated between 12,000 and 10,700 years ago. It's when we see the first permanent settlements in the Fertile Crescent, and compared to the mobile hunter-gatherers that came before them, there is a clear shift in the management and production of resources. 
communities started to produce food to extend the period of occupation at a site, and we started to see the appearance of large storage structures like granaries. In the pre-pottery Neolithic A, one of the main economic developments is the cultivation of wild cereals. From excavating sites over the past 60 plus years, evidence is suggesting more and more that it was in fact the social changes that drove the economic ones, meaning sedentism likely led to agriculture, and not the other way round. So today, a pre-pottery Neolithic A site is not defined on whether or not it had ceramics or farming, it is in fact far more complicated. We're looking at early permanent settlements in a hunter-gatherer context, but where people started to experiment with the cultivation of wild cereals and plants. It's also defined by a clear change in material culture, the types of tools and stone vessels we find at a site, and also the types of lithics discovered. In the pre-pottery Neolithic, we find things we don't see in the Epi-Paleolithic and also vice versa. There is also a change in iconography. For example, we see the emergence of common symbols and pictograms, and they're being used at multiple sites over a large area. And of course the pre-pottery Neolithic A is when we also start to see monumental architecture for the very first time. Settlement architecture does have local variation from site to site, but, in general, at a pre-pottery Neolithic A site, we find structures made of stone or mud, buildings that were made for longevity, and most of them tend to be connected to domestic activities. But inside these ancient settlements, some buildings clearly stand out due to having a communal character. They're often larger, show specific iconography, have benches around the perimeter and so on. Many believe they may have had a ritualistic function. Such special purpose buildings include the oval enclosures with large tea pillars at Gobekli Tepe, building AD at Karahan Tepe, and the partition communal buildings at Jerf El Amar and Marebet. The next developmental stage is the pre-pottery Neolithic B, roughly dated to between 10,700 and 8,500 years ago. Population centres increase in size, the shape of the architecture is now more rectangular, burnt lime plaster is widely used, and there are new types of lithics. Cultivation is now commonplace, and in some places we also see the beginnings of herding. Ritual practices tend to revolve around the human school, and iconography also seems to become less animal focused, with a stronger focus on people. The next stage is the pre-pottery Neolithic C, but this is now looked at as the last subdivision of the pre-pottery Neolithic B. And so, to complicate things further, it's now known as the final pre-pottery Neolithic B. It's less widely seen in the archaeological record, but it's here where we see the full shift from hunting and gathering to farming. There are small-scale, well-adapted communities, with new innovative technologies and domesticated plants and animals. So, even though we're looking at a period known as the pre-pottery Neolithic, we now know that late in this period, towards the end of the pre-pottery Neolithic B, the skills needed to make pottery had been developed, but these early ceramics were not widely used. They seem to be a more local innovation. So, pre-pottery is really referring to the time before the production of pottery was widespread. Before these early pottery vessels, people used stone. But in the Levant, there was also a precursor to pottery, and this appeared in the 9th millennium BC. It's known as whiteware, a form of limestone plaster that was used to make vessels. It's been found at sites from the pre-pottery Neolithic B, including Tel Azwad, Abu Huraira and Ein Ghazal. 
It was made from pulverized limestone that was heated to temperatures in excess of 1000 degrees Celsius, reducing it to lime. The lime was then mixed with ashes, straw or gravel, and made into a white or grey lime plaster. Then it was moulded into shape and air dried. No, it's not pottery as we know it, but in the pre-pottery Neolithic, skills were certainly developing towards it. There are now dozens of pre-pottery Neolithic sites identified in the Fertile Crescent, as we can see on this diagram. And to note, this diagram does not show all of them. I would also like to add that contrary to popular belief, the pre-pottery Neolithic is not a surprise in the archaeological record. It's not like people transform from cavemen to master builders and cultivators overnight. There isn't a clear and obvious line in the sand when the Epi-Paleolithic came to an end and the pre-pottery Neolithic began, because human culture was gradually evolving, with people adapting to their environment and honing their skills for thousands of years. In the preceding Epi-Paleolithic, most people lived as highly mobile hunter-gatherers, living mostly in small seasonal camps. But that is likely because the climate dictated sustenance, and what you ate and how you put food on your plate would certainly dictate the way you lived. In the Ice Age, conditions in the Fertile Crescent were cooler and drier. The climate favoured a mobile lifestyle. But don't let this fool you into thinking the people of the Epi-Paleolithic were primitive. We know from studying the preceding Natufian culture that they had sophisticated stone tools, they had elaborate art, made intricate jewellery from shell, bone and stone, and carved large decorative patterns onto their architecture. Although structures were mainly built using organic materials, people were starting to use stone. These people also made bread and brewed beer, and they also had a belief system and rituals. Trade routes and long distance exchange looked to have been set up, and people were starting to store food. So, although that is a very basic overview, it is important to keep in mind just how far humans had developed before the onset of the pre-pottery Neolithic. There was no overnight leap in human skills, it was merely the next stage in the gradual evolution of human societies. And, as I've said, there isn't a clear line in the sand when the Epi-Paleolithic came to an end and the pre-pottery Neolithic began. Tel Caramel located in Syria, and also Chakmak Tepe and Mendik Tepe in southeastern Turkey, all began life during the Younger Dryas from 12,500 to 12,000 years ago, whilst Gebekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe started life later, around 11,600 years ago. There seems to be a transition period, a grey area, where the pre-pottery Neolithic A emerged out of the Epi-Paleolithic. Mendik Tepe is an early pre-pottery Neolithic site, but it also has lithics from the Epi-Paleolithic. So it's possible that during this transition phase, some seasonal camps could have developed into permanent villages. The changes from one to the other was a gradual process, a dynamic change, and that really is an important point to remember. Now, I don't know if this video has made things any clearer, but here are five key points about the pre-pottery Neolithic to take home. Number one, we find the earliest known permanent settlements in the Fertile Crescent. Number two, people mainly relied on wild cereals and plants, and they hunted animals, but they did start to experiment with cultivation. Number three, we see the emergence of monumental architecture. Number four, material culture suggests social organisation and there were new types of ritual behaviour. Number five, it's the time when the foundations were laid for later advancements in agriculture and the societal complexities we see in the subsequent Neolithic cultures. 
In the pre-pottery Neolithic, people were laying the foundations for a new way of living, with complex settlements, food production, division of labour and so on. We see the start of complex societies. And the spectacular settlements we see in the pre-pottery Neolithic in time would ultimately be abandoned. People would move to lower-lying regions, topography that made agriculture easier and more efficient. And then, in time as population centres grew, we would see the first proto-cities in the Neolithic and Chalcolithic, such as the incredible site of Chatelhoyuk. Of course, for a 15-minute YouTube video, everything I've said is simplified. But if you want to learn more, there are many resources available on the internet. It was on my recent tour of Turkey when I was asked by my friend Joe to make videos on terminology related to sites like Gebekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe, and to use the term pre-pottery Neolithic as an example. What does it really mean? Well Joe, I hope I haven't made things worse, but right now, this is the best way I can explain it. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.